I don't change my life, then it'll probably be out on the streets. If you go in and you're a bit glum, nobody will say to you, what's wrong with your face? <laughs> People who it's are working. It's a kind of one-to-one meeting where, you know, I get to meet other people who buy clothes. It's like a My Team Recovery Real in Dundee is a story-sharing project. Not only is it important to share stories, but it's also important to listen to them. I was on the wrong path for a while and I just came to my terms to myself saying you can't go further on doing this. So it was just a change, uh, a change of mind in a sense. Well, at the end of the day, it's up to me. If I don't want to get well or I just don't want to get up. What I do before I you know, know I'm going to get to that stage again, I'll watch um, happy films, I'll take my dogs for a walk and by the time I come back from the walk or by the time I've watched the film, I've totally forgotten about the stress or situation or I no longer feel as down as what I did. I've been down to the depths and I've been been uh, around the houses quite a while. <laughs> I used to have a saying for it, I was on the wheel. It was like uh, a hamster on a wheel. Right. And uh, that's the way it felt. Uh, after 10 years of that, Something inside uh, said to me, or I said to myself, look, I have to stop this, I, c I can't fight this anymore. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to try and work with this. I still are up and down um, sometimes. On some, some days I can't really um, do much at all, um, but it's just keeping myself kind of occupied and kind of enjoying um, what I'm actually doing. I think that helps my recovery as well. Positive mind, positive thinking. I think that... Uh it's got to come within yourself. They attack a day at a time. One day at a time I attack. The hardest part is when leaving the hospital and you're stuck in this house on your own, uh, thinking it's very quiet and <laughs> you've got to get out. I didn't give up. I, I just thought, I've got to change. And, and if it doesn't work, well, it doesn't work. One thing what i done was a real positive thing was uh, stop smoking. I keep myself busy and I'm so determined, you know, that I'm not going to end up that way again. For some reason I developed a really good mm. self-awareness mm. and I just knew that if I didn't build the good relationship with myself, I was mm. never going to have good relationships with other people. It just wasn't yes. going to happen. Uh -huh. So Keeping myself um, busy and occupied actually helps with my recovery and helping others um, is what I'm focusing on. Um, that means a lot to me. Well, what for you the, the first time that you become unwell and you got well again? Might not be the same way you get better the, the next time. I used to lie in the bed for four o'clock, four o'clock at night, right, uh, and just go back to bed again. Right. So, but when I went to so much, I went to the garden and I changed. Right. So, so give you a chance to try different things. Uh -huh. Being positive and having a, a nucleus of friends and drop-ins, public houses, cafes, just in the street, you know. Places you can go. Yeah, places you can go. And we've got things planned on the 11th of maybe March, oh. uh, doing a Ivers uh, Greenhouse. Ivers Greenhouse? That's a challenge, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. so what's Ivor's greenhouse telling uh, you? We're going we're gonna to make it a bonnie for him. Ah, brilliant. Tidy it up and do it up for him. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a great uh, idea. Brilliant. Uh, when I think about being in the hospital uh, settings, yeah. people did not understand you. Uh -huh. So that made it really difficult. Well, what they've done to make a difference is they were very kind to me. Just saying somebody that understands you, and yeah. even, in, even in your counselling, yeah. It's people that understand yes. as well, so that that yeah. was massive. Yeah. Having somebody who had been through it all as well kind of helped because nobody, I didn't have MD in my life who had a mental health illness um, and it kind of made my life easier because I was able to say to them, look, 
is this working for you or what did this happen with you and am I going crazy or is this actually real or and it was able I was able to have people to talk to um, which I don't have on the outside world. Well recovery is well looking forward to. Building good relationships, uh-huh. building family relationships again, yeah. building a new circle of uh-huh. friendships, having good support, having yeah. people that understand yeah. the church is, uh-huh. and my faith is uh-huh. a big part of my recovery. Am I looking for new challenges? Because yeah. I put myself forward for new challenges, but it's yeah. difficult to know. Uh-huh. Because I've learned that in the past, yeah. the, the first things got on. What sort of particular challenges would you well, say? Well, different. Well, I've got to worry about the chrysalis, so that's a new challenge. Over the past few years, I just feel my confidence has grown. I'm able now to take some praise as well if somebody goes, oh, have you done that well? And I'm able to say, oh, yeah, I did do that, without feeling too big-headed about it. I mean, there isn't... There isn't any one thing that actually helps my recovery. It's a multiple of quite a few things that helps my recovery. I think recovery is a good thing, and I think it's good that the government are getting getting involved in that. There is help out there. You just have to know where to find it, because I feel I'm a more, more worthwhile person now, and that I do have something to contribute to society. Having a support group as well, that kind of is a kind of once-a-month meeting where you know, I get to meet other people with bipolar um, and it's easier for me to kind of speak on my mind. I've seen the, the tunnel, I've seen the light and I've got through the other end. So if I had to help other people with my stories, I would. Have a look after each and all. Uh, got, they've got any problems, we'll try to for them. I've got a better relationship with my girls now because I'm obviously happier. Um, so it's a win-win for everybody. Rather than fight the illness, Mm. I felt like I had to accept it right. and say, look, I'm, I'm, OK, I'm accepting this. I'm not fighting you anymore. Right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to work with you and work around you and, and, right. and, and try to see if I can get some kind right. of peace. And uh, over 10 years, I've not been 100% successful in that, but I've been quite successful. It's a journey, is it? Uh, you get, yeah. There's always room for learning and improvement, so I'm always improving. Yeah. I feel quite confident now at telling my story, but for somebody else, that could be a quite a slow process. Yeah. You know, they might start off uh, confining in one person, that's a group yeah. they go in, and you know, and they build it up. Yeah. That's what I had to do. I wouldn't have been able to tell my story straight off. The more, the more people that tell stories, the more awareness gets out, and the more people will learn that it is, it is a genuine problem, just the same as any physical illness. I've been going to the Willows now for three years. Well, it's actually called Damage, but we call it the Willows. We prefer that. <laughs> it's much nicer, it's much nicer. Um, it's a place for people with mental health problems, and um, they're really supportive. The strange thing was, I didn't know anything about the place until I had to go to the job centre when my husband decided to leave me. And um, the first lady was very rude and just said, why haven't you worked for 20 odd years and all of this? And I was getting really upset. And this other lady came over and she goes, um, you're not fit to work just now. And so I explained my situation. And then she says, I'm putting you on to my co-worker. So this was, I met Fiona Bachelor from the One to One Project at the job centre. And for the first few weeks, Fiona came to my house. And then on the fifth week, she goes, look, I want you to, to, to do something really good. She said, I want you to try and get on the bus and come down. So that was really nerve-wracking because my confidence was at a low ebb, really low. But I made it. I come down the town, met Fiona, and we went to Damage. Met Kevin and the rest of the, the group there. Showed us about. Mentioned the art group. Well, I'm very art and crafty. Always have been, and um, what to fill a forum. It got signed by the three of us, and then Kevin said, "I don't think there'll be a problem, but we just have to wait and see." But within a fortnight, I got a letter saying it'd been accepted, and I could now start going to Willows. I'm fed up hurting myself. I'm fed up hurting other people. 
I'm fed up being ill, I'm fed up being paranoid. I'm fed up being angry. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, I've got three children, you know, at that time. I've got umpteen grandchildren now. And I, I just can't continue this way. Like you come to a crossroad and, yeah. and one arrow points that way and the other one, yeah. what do you want to do, mate? Uh, do you want to keep on this road yeah. or do you want to go off it? Yeah. And, and I thought, well, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to take my chances. And you know, I joined a singing group. Uh-huh. And I, when I joined it, I joined it just for something to do, to take us out of the mental... It was a community-based group. Mm. And I wanted to step out the me- mental health setup mm. and, and to be among what I would class as normal people. Yeah, right? mainstream Not, sort of. yeah, yeah. yeah. I realised that these people, there was nothing to be afraid. Mm. You know, they were nice people. Yeah. There was no stigma attached, there was nothing. I didn't tell them about my history. No. But they made me welcome. and. And I felt this this is better than what I've been doing. Yes. And uh, it led it led to playing a guitar. Yeah. Uh, it led to going around nursing homes singing for old people, and uh-huh. and, and it just it was a it was a totally yeah. different road I took. Did you- I felt like if I could help others, mm. that was helping me. What's been important for me in my own recovery is being able to help other people, being made an example of in a good in a good way, and um, people saying positive things about me, etc. And um, actually, to the point that I've been, you know, said to by a couple of people that have actually been like the hero, you know, um, to get through what I got through. Everybody deserves to be happy. Nobody deserves to feel that horrible way, you know, whether it's anxiety, depression, any kind of mental illness, it's just not fair, eh? Um, and there is there is a light out there and they can get better. Might not be overnight, we know that, but I never thought I'd get better ever. No. Never thought I'd get back to myself. I first started going to the Haven um, when I got out of the car's view, I, I was there as a patient and I started to volunteer in the kitchen, doing things, keep myself occupied. I still wasn't fully recovered at the time. I was still very, very anxious and would have to leave sometimes early, you know. Um, and then I just started to feel better, uh, become more determined, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm not going to leave, I'm going to fight this. And then the next thing I was up at Cars View where I'd been a patient uh, doing peer support, helping people up there, explaining the story to them. That, and it lets them see, oh well, you know, there is hope there. You know, if we could, if we've been there as patients, and we're there and here now, then they, the chance they could do exactly the same. Well, I wanted to ask about what was what uh, what recovery actually means to you, what it means to you personally. I feel better when I get up, oh. up early in the morning rather than, rather than lying in my bed till half past ten, which I've been doing for the past past couple of weeks because I've only been that way also. But, right. but when I've got somebody to get up for, uh, I can't do it like this, like this morning and yesterday morning. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's what it means to me. I guess it's the same for me. It's getting outside the four walls, which uh, I stayed in the kind of solitude of my own head for that long, that it's good to come out and see other people that are like-minded and you get a chance to share your problems. And uh, it's, sometimes they, you don't feel like coming in, once you, but once you've been in and you've done your, your wee bit of, and uh, you do go away with quite a bit of satisfaction mm-hmm. over it, and it just, it, just, it just changed your mood without a doubt. I think recovery to me meant that I was spending more positive time with my family uh, and I wasn't sort of just in the house all the time and I'd say certainly getting out and I can echo that because I would get out and have somewhere particular to go. I love making or growing things and sharing that with other people whether it's making jam or sharing jam out with folk or, or making soup and bringing soup in. I mean I love, I love doing it. I love sharing things with other people. I work for a uh... It was a private estate up in up in Nairn, but right. uh, I was there for just about 13 years, and it's 
but I'd go into here and skate, because Joyce can sleep me here, go and do that and show such, such and such how to mm. do that. And, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm glad I'm sharing that knowledge. I think it'd be fair to say we're for that I'd be hiding in a corner if anybody came round right. it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I wouldn't be Aye. volunteering my, my knowledge or even trying to help people out mm-hmm. just take off, but uh, it's different now. Uh, mm-hmm. It definitely brings on your confidence, without a doubt. Yeah, because I've, I've, I've seen it. Uh, you see it for your own eyes when you've well, been that here for aye. that long a time. Yes, I've seen it in you the past, because we, one of you, you started it for me, didn't you? About a month before me. Uh, we've been about the, about ah, that's right, because I, for, I first met you when, when you were out there in the... In the, in the, in the in something. But it is, it's good to see it, and it does have that knock-on effect, where if you see somebody's doing, you maybe leave them a bit, and then you go to them, and then you... You are right and all the rest of it, mm-hmm. and then you're able to say, Well, I actually went through the same thing as you just mm-hmm. two weeks ago or two yeah, days ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's really important, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, well, working here, uh, doing something that I've got a great passion for, gardening, as well as um, helping others or supporting others uh, and guiding in some respect there through their recovery journey, that's, that, that's, really, that's really important to me as well. Yeah. I, I'm being fortunate in my primary health care, my GP is. is been fantastic over the years, okay. uh, very supportive. And a lot of people have mentioned helping others as being a significant thing. What, what would you have to say about that? Well, mutual support, that's important because uh, doing the Willow Centre, we are mutually supporting each other. And if they're in a bad day, ask them how they're in a bad day, mm-hmm. see if you can help them. Mm-hmm. When you're helping somebody else, you're, help, you're helping yourself. Uh, and if, if you're able to put somebody's mind at ease, just if it's for, I don't know, half an hour, an hour, and you've went through mm-hmm. the same problems as them. They're, they're not sitting with a doctor or anybody like mm-hmm. that, where it's, it's mm-hmm. a really formal thing. You're trying to remember everything about what you, your last bad episode was. Mm-hmm. Here it just flows. Aye. It just comes out itself. It's just like, uh, I maybe it's the surroundings, I don't know, but uh, it definitely makes you feel better when you're helping somebody else without a doubt. Somebody said to you, uh, you'd have to cover a little bit. How would you reply to that? What would you say? Well, you do have to cover a bit. That's a few years. It doesn't happen mm. overnight. And it's got to happen, in my opinion, for me anyway, it happened very gradually. So I'm almost like wee baby steps, sort of thing. But sometimes you were too forward and forward back. It doesn't mm. always go no, as you it's smooth. It yeah. can be almost like a roller coaster in some respects. You can have that at It's getting yourself back up there again. Um, so, yeah, re- recovery is totally possible. There's still a lot of stigma about mental health. Oh, right. I mean, mm-hmm. people don't understand it. They just say, yeah. oh, he's mental. I mean, you still come across a lot of stigma. I come across uh, mm-hmm. a lot of stigma yeah. against mental health. So what I say is don't, don't give up hope. No. Yeah. Keep, if, if you can't, sit, get your best to strive, even if it's only wee tiny things mm-hmm. you're doing. In fact, it was almost like having a jigsaw with no picture. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then finding the pieces as I went along. Right. Yeah. And then finally, yeah, all right, I've got the whole picture now. I've got it. Yeah. And you okay, can see it. yeah, I can, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that was totally yeah. fabulous. It was just, wow. <laughs>